I want to propose to you right now that I believe it's possible to become buttonless and triggerless in Jesus. What's up, y'all? It's Rachel Elizabeth, and you're watching Real Talk with Rach, where we talk about real things, because it's the real, honest, vulnerable things that get us deeper in relationship with others and deeper in intimacy with God, but we have to communicate them, and that's what I want to talk about today. So here I am in Spokane, Washington, at my parents' house, where I've been for a little over a week, and it has been both wonderful and so full of grace, but also, it's an adjustment. For sure, it has been an adjustment. And a lot of that adjustment involves relearning how to communicate with those I love when I've been very much on my own in many ways for the last however many months since I saw them last, but also since I began this purposefully homeless journey last last October, over a year ago. And what's interesting about this topic is that normally when I record these vlogs, I talk about the lesson that God has been teaching me the previous week or consistently revealing to me over the previous week. But this week has been different because it's been a multitude of different subjects that have come up and a lot of frustrations. And I guess the common theme has been communication. There's been a struggle to communicate what's on my heart. There's been a struggle for my loved ones to communicate with me. Partly that's because it's been a while since we've been together, but also it's because I've changed so much and it's almost like we're relearning each other. But even more than that, what has stood out to me the most is how important it is to learn how to guard your mouth, guard your tongue, to allow God to transform your heart. Because how we speak and what we speak comes out of our hearts. In Matthew 15, Jesus told the disciples that what comes out of the mouth is what defiles a person. It's your words that become the litmus test for the state of your heart. I don't know about you, but I know that I've been in situations where I've said things that I had to immediately follow up with, that's not what I meant, or please don't take that the wrong way. Because we can be so careless with our words sometimes, or our words don't communicate what we should say, but instead they communicate what our hearts are thinking. And y'all, this topic is really convicting, <laughs> but I also think it's a really good thing because death and life are in the power of the tongue. What we say, how we say it, has an enormous effect on how people view us, how people view themselves, whether or not people see Jesus in us and through us. And the only way to make sure that what comes out of our mouths is going to be edifying, encouraging, pure, lovely, and point other people to the beauty of our Savior is if we get our hearts right with Him before we even open our mouths. Practically speaking, that's why I do my best to spend time with the Lord in prayer and in the Word before I even see another human being or have a chance to communicate with another human. But it also means that we need to be sure that we are taking our hearts to God and asking Him, deliberately asking Him to reveal our dirt, our junk, and asking Him to get rid of it. But y'all, there's a preliminary step to that too, and that is knowing that God is love that God is good, that God is merciful, and that he isn't gonna punish you for being real with yourself in front of him and trusting him enough to know that when you bring your junk to him, not only does he clean you up, but he forgets it because he is love and love keeps no record of wrongs. So the second that you're honest with him and you repent to him, it's as if it never happened. But I know there's a lot of you who struggle with the same thing where you have to keep coming back to him and you don't know why you keep doing the same thing. Partly I believe that's because you don't know who he is and you don't know who you are in him. Because the Bible says that when you're born again, the moment you are saved, you become a new creation. The old is gone, the new is here. You who were completely dead because of sin, made brand new, alive in the spirit, completely restored in newness of life, in his image, in his perfection, you're no longer who you used to be. You are a brand new creation. What you see in the mirror may look the same at least for now. But the more you realize who you are, the more you're going to start reflecting him and people are going to start noticing a change even in what you look like because you're going to be radiant because he is the light shining through your pores. His beauty is going to reflect 
through you to the people that he is then able to love through you. This all starts with coming to him with your junk and being honest with him. That said, if Jesus is our ultimate goal, he is the perfection we strive for, not in our own effort, but in daily submission and surrender, leaning into him, seeking him, more of him, more of his word, more of the truth of the word of God. The more time we spend in his presence, the more he's able to transform us. We have to choose to surrender, but he is the goal, right? So if we daily seek to look more and more like him, we are going to supernaturally grow up into him just like children grow up without having to try to do so. We're going to start to look more and more like our daddy. Okay, so that said, what if we just react to something? What if somebody does or says something that simply triggers us and we can't help it? Something just comes out of our mouths that we either regret or justify because it's a trigger. Some of you call those buttons and when certain people press those buttons, you justify your behavior because of that button. But what if I told you that Jesus didn't react in sin because of a trigger or a button, but instead when he was on trial, when he was being mocked, when he was betrayed, when he could have saved himself from the cross, his behavior and his words were not reactive. He was self-controlled enough to only speak love and truth, the words that his father gave him to speak. Or, most shockingly, he kept his mouth shut, which is the biggest challenge for all of us, right? We want to defend ourselves. And in fact, I used to be a whole lot worse at this. He is transforming me, but I still have my triggers. And honestly, most of the time I want to defend myself, it's because I'm afraid of something. I'm afraid of an outcome. But back to Jesus. The prophet Isaiah talked about the coming Messiah and how he would respond when he was on trial, when he was being wrongly accused. So I want to share Isaiah 53 verses 6 through 10. And it starts off talking about us. And then it talks about Jesus. And in both cases, we're referred to as sheep. And it says, we all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him, now talking about Jesus, the iniquity of us all. He, Jesus, was oppressed and afflicted. Have you ever been oppressed or afflicted? Pretty sure we all have, right? Yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And who can speak of his descendants? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Y'all, Jesus was completely perfect. He was completely without sin, and yet he never defended himself. When it came down to it, he could have completely stopped the crucifixion process. But he, knowing that he could have relationship with us, that he could set us free from sin and death and infirmity, he knew that he was going to go to the cross because of his love for us. So he is our example, which means it is absolutely possible to live a buttonless, triggerless Christianity. And y'all, this isn't something we can do in our own strength, but it goes back to the very first thing I talked about, which is making sure that the effort we put in is not to be better people for other people or for God, but simply to strive to enter his rest, which means We seek him every day. We ask him to search our hearts every day. When he reveals something to us that is not in line with the perfection, pure love of Christ, we immediately repent of it. We turn from it. We don't do it again. And it's only by his strength, his grace, receiving his identity, his life lived through us, laying our own lives down, that we can even hope to live like that. And yet it's possible. If Jesus did it, it's possible. If it's in the Bible and Jesus lived it, that is what we have access to. And if we're not there yet, it's simply because we're not there yet, but it is available to us. And y'all, I don't know about you, but whatever is available, I want it. So by prayer, by fasting, by petition, asking and believing for it, seeking the Father's face through prayer and worship and meditation on his word in the secret place, 
He promises to transform us. He promises to renew us. He promises to give us strength. He promises to meet us there. And he promises to reward us. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They will be satisfied. Y'all read the Beatitudes. It's in Matthew chapter 5. These are the spiritual blessings of those who seek God. This is not some religious practice. This is a pursuit of lovers. This is the pursuit of your heart when you're madly in love with your creator. And if you're not and you want to be, that's all you need. Tell him that you want to be. Ask him for the hunger. I promise you, <laughs> he'll meet you where you're at and take you further than you ever knew was possible. And y'all, I'm not there yet, but I know it's possible to not be triggered. I know it's possible to no longer have buttons that people can push. I know it's possible because that's who Jesus is and that's how he lived. So I encourage you, I implore you, and I challenge you to lay down your rights, to lay down your offenses, and to seek to become more and more like Jesus every day by spending time with him and learning from him. Because y'all, becoming like Jesus, just like becoming like your parents, it's more caught than taught. So don't let your intellect get in the way of your relationship. Go spend time with him. He loves just being with you. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel, share it with a friend. If you'd like to support this ministry in any way, there are links to donate in the description box below. Thank you so much to my Patreon family. Couldn't do it without you. I love you and I'm praying for you. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great week. If you watched all the way to the end of this video, I want you to tell me one thing that's on your Christmas wish list. I'll see you next time.